Hey guys, what's going on? Random Andrew here, brother Craig, <laughs> shoveling snow over there. Guess where we are? That's right, time for another bushcraft day out at the hut. So what we're gonna do today, well, actually I wanna start by explaining, we just got out of a polar vortex. We're, I'm sure you've seen it all over social media. It was anywhere in our area of Canada from minus 20 to minus 55 in some parts. I know up north, like in the Tomogamy, in the Espanola area, they were facing some of that minus 45, minus 50 stuff. Yeah, that'd be yeah, that was kind of just stay home weather. I wanted to get out here and do it, but I didn't have that crucial piece which you've seen in the last video, the wood stove. So I thought, you know, once I get the wood stove, I'll just jump all over getting out there and doing some overnights in the bush, but let me tell you guys, it's wet. Everything is melting right now. It's plus three degrees out. Heavy. Heavy to walk through, heavy to pull this sled through, this sled right here. It's got the wood stove on it. I'm going to rip into it in a minute. We're gonna set it up in here. Since I get a little bit further along, I'll update you guys. Well, this is a heavy walk out here though, eh? It was good though, it's good Like exercise. you could tell, you could see sweating. I could see the sweat. Yeah, we gotta get the tarp set up and the stove set up. Maybe while I'm setting up the stove, you can work on the top tarp. Yep. All right. Getting her done. All right, all right, all right. We got a Craig sitting here. You know something I was just saying to him, and yes, I'm catching you guys up now, is he has never done batoning before. His boys got him that knife for your birthday last year? Was it my birthday? I think yeah, it was your yeah. birthday. And this is probably the most he's used it so far in its proper use, other than just to nick something or cut something, like string, rope, whatever. But he's been batoning here for the last 20 minutes or so. Yep. Providing nice, easy. good split wood because we had trouble getting this thing going because the wood's all wet. So as he's batoning, I put a couple pieces up there to dry out a little bit. And you see all this excess smoke? That is coming from the joints on the pipe. So this is where that tinfoil tape might come in handy, but that might be too hot for the tinfoil tape. We forgot the aluminum foil that was supposed to be used to make a temporary stove jack around here. And this is just a emergency solar shelter to tarp mylar stuff. So we got a bit of NASA in our construction. Look at him just batoning away. Yeah, super nice day to be out here, that's for sure. It's warm. I mean, I, I was kind of chilly on the way out because the walk in, I, when I started this vlog, I didn't really have the peace of mind to say it because my mind was all over. Uh, the stress of walking in, the sweating, and then trying to lose a layer to stop sweating, and then you get to chill. You're not supposed to do that, but eh, survived. It's not like it's minus 20 out here right now, <laughs> but I still did get a chill because layers. You got to wear the right ones together or it works against you. Oddly enough, two days ago, it was minus 20. Yeah. So as you guys can tell, we got some tarps up. Like I said, I got the mylar backing just to kind of keep some of the heat in a little bit. Uh, I got our bench relocated over to this wall because it was more convenient to put the stove in the back corner. I'll show you that in a minute. Look, I'm just going to town, eh? Go Craig. <laughs> Everybody give Craig a big thumbs up. You know, if you, if you think he's doing a good job, give a thumbs up to the video. Let's Two go. Thumbs. Take a look at the stove. Bunch of cut wood. Got my fire glove here. As I was telling you guys about this when we were in Princess Auto. This isn't the other one. I think the other one had liquid air or something written on it. Yeah. So that would be the Does one that's. Does actually a, have the. Uh... Nope, just as well does. Okay. Ultimate comfort. All the split wood we've got here. If we had somewhere snow free enough, we'd be piling it nice and neat. Probably still do that. We'll take a look inside the stove. Look at this. This isn't even hot. I can open it right up like that. Look at that, guys. Isn't that cool? Awesome. It's burning good now. So I have the back vent just barely open. I have the flue vent on the bottom. I think that's what Rob was calling it was a flue vent. It's closed up all the way. And like it's, you can actually feel the heat all the way out to here. So you think if we tarped every wall or put this stuff up on every wall, made a stove jack, sealed it up up there, did a little, a little more efficient job of the tarping. I don't know. That, that's not done too bad, but it could be better. 
Yeah, we just essentially turned the shelter, the hut. I almost lost my balance. Can you stop whacking for a minute? Yep. That's gonna be through the background of all of that, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Sorry guys, didn't even think about it. But we basically turned the hut into a tarp tent and we could just put a door on the front that'll stop that breeze from coming in. All this heat would most likely stay in here and be a pretty warm stay. But I'm not staying out here tonight. Let's put that door up. It's gonna be too wet, yeah. We'll go working on that door. So I know it's a bit tarpy. You know, we got things blowing around. The wind's picking up outdoors, but things are staying. It's just noticing with the vape. Watch this, you'll see where the air flow yeah. is. Yeah, that's a good experiment. So just blow the vape out from here, and we'll follow where the vapor goes. Right, you can see. see some is immediately going over to this corner, so if we wanted to seal this up. And that wouldn't be hard because there's a lot tie, of excess. Yeah, we could tie all these ringlets in close to all that. We could bring that right up and over. This is actually our door. Yeah, you just got it set so you just pull it open. We can go in and out of there. Uh, the stove is doing really good. Like Nothing's heating up over here yet. We've obviously got some reflectives up to throw the heat back at us. But having no tin foil up here, having no tin foil for the stove jack, you can feel where a lot of heat is just pouring out mm -hmm. of here. But it's great because it also provides us some ventilation for now. We don't need it to be boiling hot. It's not polar vortex right now. If I had brought the tin foil, I forgot the tin foil, but if I brought the tin foil, we could make a temporary stove jack around all this and keep all that in. Plus we got T-Rex tape, hmm. we have aluminum foil tape. We could seal this thing right up if we wanted. Easy peasy. I really do think we could. But now I think we're just gonna chillax, enjoy the wood stove. I think we got another hour or so before we gotta pack up. And at that, it's good to be out here, but it's too wet to stay out here overnight. Oh yeah. Have a look at that, folks. I'm outside of the hut right now, obviously. No, I'm inside. I just did a really clever job disguising it. You can feel that it's colder out here. That's for sure. Well, it's now approaching that time a lot quicker than we thought it was gonna. It's approaching that time where we have to take everything down and uh, I'm half torn to leave the top tarp, but at the same time, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not gonna be able to stay in this thing overnight until we can do something to seal up all these spaces between the wood, because it's just letting wind right through. I could bring more tarps out and line it with tarps, but I'm wondering it would just be easier to make a tarp tent. Figure out how to make a tarp tent and stay in that with the wood stove somewhere. Still experimenting, still trying these things out. But it's now so close to the time that Craig has to be getting home that we're gonna do a quick shutdown of the stove and uh, pack everything up. It's gonna take time for the stove to cool down though, so I think I'm gonna get on that first. All right, so tarps are down, stove is down, shut down, cooled down, and in the sled, we just gotta throw a tarp over it, tie it up, and clean up the last little bits of our sh your stuff, our extras, so there's no sign that we were actually here. And then we're out of here. We're gone. Yeah. And afterwards, I'll explain something over why I'm not doing an overnight, but I was just talking with Craig about that, and I think he full well agrees, you know, he's, not comfortable with the idea of knowing I'm out here not being fully prepared. Is that kind of the thing? Yeah. yeah something yeah. like that. And if I was tougher, if I had a little bit more of that Joe Robinette <laughs> or Winter Trek or even Camper Christine, I mean, she's a trooper, I could probably do it, but I can't. It's too breezy in here for as cold as it gets at night. So let's catch up once we're at the car and no longer at a time. Yeah. See, there's a hill both ways. This is downhill on the way in. So it's gonna be uphill on the way out. I mean, that doesn't change, right? <laughs> uh, 
No, it could be a lot worse, but if it was colder, the snow might be easier to truck through. New problem. Oh, we got another log coming up. Just in case, give a little helping hand there. <laughs> you know, if that stove had a little bit sturdier construction, yeah. I'd say just ride the sled down the last hill out. <laughs> if he decides to, don't worry, we'll film it. Oh, this, you, you just heard everything I just said. Yeah. But I'm gonna repeat it to the vlog. We see lots of deer, like signs of deer. We see tracks, deer poops, big flattened out, melted areas where the deers have been laying. We don't ever see any actual deer. We can walk along this trail as quiet as we can be, even like in the non-snow season, and we still don't manage to see the deer. Oh. Yeah, that's a little bit dangerous. Oh well, that's part of being out here. Falling behind because I keep stopping to take pictures. Oh, it's actually, my boots are loose. So it's like, you could equate it to driving a truck through the mud without lock differentials. Things are like slipping, spinning that shouldn't be. So to answer the question, the sled is holding up pretty dang good. Really glad I got it instead of trying to use the one I was building. So ashamed of that one I was building, I don't even want to show you guys. Oh man, that thing looks really nice covered in snow. Definitely, if you guys haven't clicked like yet already, give a big thumbs up to Craig for this video. He's hauling that sled all the way out on his own for me. I hauled it most of the way in, but it's my sled. <laughs> okay, on with the walk. Oh yeah, it's not going anywhere. I just wanted to... Let her rip down that way. <laughs> oh, I'm not letting go of this thing. Letting gravity do all the work. And because I am who I am, I'm trying to video it at the same time. <laughs> this will be an epic wipeout. Oh, there's not going to be a wipeout. But now that I've said that, between the footprints and our sled marks coming in, dude, you could almost just like bobsled this hill. <laughs> Here you go, you want to tow again? We're pretty much done with the hill. Gravity has given up on me. Don't remember water in this part. There wasn't. Craig is just saying he doesn't remember there being that much water here. Yeah, that's actually melting pretty quick though. Yep, yeah, that's What the hell? What but let me finish about? filming this this segment and then I'll start pulling, okay? But I just wanted to show the vlog all this busted up section up here. You have to forgive uh, the loudness, my proximity to the microphone right now, guys. I got it tethered around my neck so I could have it handy. If you look at all that ice. Ooh. Yeah, it's very rough walking here right now. Here, I'll just show you here. Look at that all. Pretty crazy, Cattle Creek. I ain't paddling you right now. I don't think anybody is. <laughs> Craig got himself a handle. <laughs> oh, I see your car, we're almost there. We're almost there. So underneath our footsteps, it's all turned to slush. So all this is probably gonna be gone by tomorrow. 
which meant pulling a wood stove on a sled would be pretty dang frustrating. So I think I made the right call. Whew. But on the plus side, it's sunny, it's warming up, it'll snow again, and uh, it was a good experiment to see what all, you know, how the wood stove would work inside of the hut. Thank you, Craig, for getting me out here. Thanks, guys, for watching. Tune in again soon. We're going back out in a few days.